Hi, folks. Uh, this is a little lecture on W. Paul Jones's Theological Worlds. I say elsewhere in the site that he's got two books. Um, this is the first one, I think 1989. And then several years later, he wrote a book called Worlds Within a Congregation, where he looks at things like pastoral care, education, um, preaching and so on with this lens of theological worlds that he developed in the first book. He was a United Methodist. I think he converted to Roman Catholicism. Uh, he used to teach at a United Methodist seminary out in the Midwest. I mentioned that I'm gonna use this handout. There it is, and you'll have it in your own hands as well. And I want just to talk through the theological worlds. You'll have a lot of things you can read about them, but generally uh, Jones uses what he calls an obsessio and what he calls an epiphania. Uh, I don't know why he's using Latin, but this kind of sort of what keeps you up at night thing is the obsession or the sense of the human condition where you live and what is the good news? What's the, what's the gospel? What's the manifestation of God's work in the world that gives you hope or peace or both, given that you live a lot of your time in this particular obsession? So we all occupy multiple worlds. There's a lot of conversation about whether there are, you know, at one point, Joan says there are many, as many Christian worlds as there are Christians. Um, I find these five a helpful starting place. And the first one is uh, separation and reunion, or um, for me, uh, exile and homecoming. You can hear, even with the words I choose, that that is a huge emphasis in, say, the Hebrew Bible. Uh, and also, to some extent, for us, right? I uh, once was lost, and now I'm found. Or... Jesus came to his own and they didn't know him, but to those who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become the children of God. The gospel of John talks about Jesus as one who comes from the father, who introduces us to the father, who returns to the father. Hmm. Um, separation and reunion. And the and what salvation looks like in this world is coming home or being home. In world two, uh, we find lots of liberation theologians. So if there's gonna be salvation, it needs to come in this time and place. At least it needs to be prefigured in some important ways in this time and place in history. And change is what needs to happen. And the kind of central figure in this world is the one who battles against the forces of evil and or the liberator, whether that's Moses in the Old Testament or Jesus in the New. Uh, the dark underside of world two, of course, is that you can be, uh, you can invoke this kind of good guys and bad guys uh, um, template and put it anywhere you want. So at one point, one of the people were reading this week, uh, Christian Hendricks notes that the Trump, uh, Trumpism is kind of built in a sort of world two environment where there are bad guys and we have to make America great again. You might also say there's a little world one in there. We're gonna get home to an America where people like us are, you know, safe and happy and healthy. Um, and you can see how, um, how twisted your, your um, connection to this worldview can become. Just because you're into conflict and vindication doesn't mean you're necessarily into vindication as Jesus embodies it, right? All right, on to world three, emptiness and fulfillment. And this is kind of a, the, the obsession here is just, I feel so small, right? In such a big world, how can my life have any meaning at all? And you can feel small and powerless and disconnected and alone. 
and um, and the Christian gospel for that can sometimes sound like you are a beloved child of God. You are God's child. You belong to God. And um, there, this is probably the world I get least of any of them personally, so I have a hard time teaching it. Um, but there's a sense of um, connection and power comes from that connection. Purpose comes from that connection. World four is what a lot of Lutherans were raised in and Presbyterians for that matter, um, who probably had to learn about total depravity at some point in their formation. Uh, the problem is sin or guilt or both. And the solution is forgiveness and one who redeems even uh, the worst of us and the best of us and, and transforms that. Suffering and endurance is the last world that Jones mentions. And this seems weird. It's not suffering and, you know, end of suffering or something. Uh, it's more like um, suffering is a daily part of life. And Jesus gets it. You're not alone. So someone might say, nobody knows the trouble I've seen. Nobody knows but Jesus. And that's enough. That's enough meaning and purpose and strength and comfort to keep on. You can hear, I don't want to make this very long. I could talk all day about them. Um, but you can hear in each of these worlds, you, you may have thought, even as you were go, as I was going through them, oh, that reminds me of a Bible text. Oh, that reminds me of a Bible story. All of them have connections to scripture and hymns and songs and uh, stories of the faith. It's not the only way, these are not the only ways that Christians understand their need and God's provision but they're really good ways to get us started. And we're gonna see when we meet all these characters in fiction that they're working within theological worlds, either these or other constructions kind of like them. And that's why I wanted to start this class with this lecture.